Hey hey, dear viewers. We're back with another exciting video about Comfy UI. Today, we've got something really special for you. Our master Murphy has made some exciting improvements in the inpaint section of the workflow. And you know what? He's even integrated the focus inpaint. Sounds exciting, right? Let's dive in and see what he's prepared for us. Look what we have here, the good old red error message. Don't we all know that feeling? Those missing custom nodes always causing trouble. But don't worry, we'll fix it in no time. Let's take a look at where exactly the nodes are missing. Well, as suspected, all the missing nodes are only in the in-painting group. Today, it's made easy for us as we simply use the manager. Just watch and see how straightforward it is. Select Install Missing Custom Nodes. Here is the link to the developer's page. Here is where you can get the models and where you need to copy them. Alright, let's download these models here. The focus underscore inpaint underscore head model is marked as pickle, and we can't guarantee that the file is virus free. We use the file, and it's also required to perform focus inpaint. As always, it's your own decision and your own risk, we can't guarantee anything for other people's programs. We don't necessarily need the V25. We won't download it. Let's go back to the developers page and see what other models we need. Here, you can also see examples, workflows, and an explanation of what we can do. We still need the llama and a matte model. You can either get both, or just the FP16 model, which still yields good results. The models need to be placed in the model slash and paint folder. Let's create a folder named in paint inside the comfy UI models folder and copy all the downloaded files there. Let's quickly install the custom nodes and restart Comfy UI. We're not entirely sure if you've already installed the Comfy UI Art Venture node before. So, let's quickly show you where to find it in case you haven't yet. Let's turn on the display of nodes in the manager to do that. Now you can see exactly which custom node each node belongs to. Handy, right? Ah, uh, do we have the name? Now let's search for it in the manager. Normally, this node should have been installed along with the missing installed nodes at the beginning. We just wanted to show you the information again. Even though the developer hasn't written much about it on their page, the things they've programmed are quite useful. Let's turn off the display of the names again. Let's run the workflow and its default configuration for a quick overview. 0 for the complete view. 1 for the starting settings. 3 for the prompt. Here, we stick with variant 1 on the right side, and we don't change anything at the prompt. 4 for extra conditioning. We don't use that, so we leave it at 1. We've explained what you can do with it in the previous video. Five for lower models, let's also leave that for now. Six for control net models, we're also not using that for now. Seven control center, here we want to activate the in-painting. All right, let's hit push the button to get things started, but for now, without any extra tools. All right, there he is, our buddy, ready to go. Turn on in paint. Attach the noodle. That's it. 
Now just press I on the keyboard and off we go to the InPaint group. Here we are. The InPainting is divided into four sections. In theory, you could also just take these out of the workflow and create a standalone InPainting workflow. Maybe we'll show you that briefly at the end of the video. Here we can choose which image to continue working with. One for the image from the workflow, and two to directly load an external image here. Additionally, if we want, we can enlarge the image to achieve better in painting results. However, keep in mind that we are limited by VRAM. Just try out what works best for you. Here in the green group, you'll find the masking options for in or out painting. We have provided four different variants. Variant 1 is rectangular masking based on values. Variant 2 is manual masking, which we use the most. The two red nodes are not connected so that the workflow encounters an error allowing us to manually mask, and then we can reconnect the nodes to continue working. With Variant 3, you can activate text-based masking, which works quite well for faces, for example. With Variant 4, you can activate masking for outpainting. You can enlarge the image using the values. Here, at the top, you need to set which type of masking you want to work with. In the red group, we can choose different in-painting variants. There are various options. We simply use the standard model. Then we have to leave both values at 1. And it's best to add differential diffusion to it. With this, we can turn any standard model into an in-paint model. Sometimes it works quite well, sometimes less so. We included it more for completeness, but we're not big fans of it. If we want to use a specific in paint model, we set the first node to 2, leave the second node at 1. If we want to use the old UNET in paint model, which we showed you in our first in painting video and still consider to be a brilliant in paint model, we switch the first node back to 1 and set the second one to 2. For the focus in paint model, we also need to leave both settings at 1 here, but we need to load the focus in paint model and also set it to 1 here. Here we can adjust which models we would load. This naturally needs to match the values chosen above. Focus, in paint, and differential diffusion can basically always be added. This activates the checkpoint loader for an additional in paint model. Here we've loaded the juggernaut in painting model. Where to get it? You've seen in our first in-painting video. And here's the UNET loader for the UNET in-painting model. Here we use the VAE and the clip from our standard model in the start group. You can get that most easily through the manager. Let us show you briefly. Just watch. Enter in-paint, and there we have it. You can choose whether you want the big one or the small one, both work quite well. Here you can also activate an additional lower model. This can sometimes be helpful with faces, hands, or, well, just about anything else. This is the main in painting group. Here you can use different conditioning modes. For starters, we recommend setting to. This way, you use your own independent prompt. Of course, you can also mix it with a creation prompt. You can set and change an independent seed here. You can leave the denoise setting at 1 if you're using in-paint models. Automatic CFG is necessary if we have used it somewhere earlier in the workflow, otherwise the in-painting won't work correctly. You can turn it on or off. The important thing is that the node is present. Here you can enlarge, invert, or blur the mask. Just follow the instructions provided in the blue node, A really interesting feature is the next section here. With this, you can prepare the in-painting area in various ways. We have four different options. Option 1, no preparation. Option 2, pre-fill the area with a standard color. Option 3, completely blur the area with the existing colors. Option 4, scribble the area with a special model, which can lead to brilliant in-painting results. 
You can simply choose which option you want to use here and read on the left what works best for what. Let's start with something simple yet challenging. We want to give our buddy some really blue eyes. First, we need to mask the eyes. Let's press Q prompt and wait for the workflow to encounter an error. There it is already, but we expected that because the two red nodes are not connected. Right click and open the mask editor. There we go. Bam, the eyes are masked. Alternatively, the SAM detector could also be an option. Now, don't forget to connect the red nodes. Now, let's just leave everything turned off and see how in-painting works with just the mask preparation, without any special models. The only prompt is blue eyes. You can see how the different masks are prepared, just like I described earlier. Na ja, nicht schlecht, aber auch nicht wirklich gut. Schauen wir uns die nächste Variante an. Alright, let's add in the differential diffusion. Hmm, not really impressive. Maybe it works well for specific cases, like Olivio showed us with the glasses. But we're not really convinced by it. Okay, next variant. Now we're using the focus in paint. Also with the standard model. Better. But with this mask preparation, hmm, let's take a look at the special in-paint models. Okay, let's start with the juggernaut in-painting model. That should be really good for eyes. Select and adjust everything correctly, and let's get started. Damn, that didn't work. What the hell is going on here? An error message? I don't get it. All right, let's take a calm look and see where the mistake might be. Maybe we made a small error somewhere. Ah, there it is. We selected focus in paint, but the focus model is disabled. That can't work. But we don't need focus in paint anyway, so just set it to two here, then it should work. What does Murphy always say? As soon as you do it right, it works. That looks really good, right? Alright, let's give the Unet in painting a try now. Ziggy really likes that too. Attention! Focus in paint plus an in paint model is too much. So always pay attention to the settings. Here you can try out the different masking preparations. I'll show you one more here. There are different variants and different in paint models. Here you can play around and see what works best for what purpose. Changing the seed can also be helpful. Let's select an external image. To do this, we need to switch to two below and choose an image above. Ah, Murphy in his black suit. Let's add some color to him. Let's first separate these red nodes so we can mask. Start it and wait for the error message. 
So, let's dive into the image with the open Mask Editor What shall we do with this guy now? Ah, uh, let's just change the vest And next, attention 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 Don't forget to reconnect the red nodes Let's just leave everything on focus in paint for now And here comes the red vest Fire away for the next round We'll speed up the video so you don't have to watch the failed attempts for too long That's a fail, Murphy would say This looks really crappy Alright, let's try a different mask preparation You already know what this mask preparation and this in-painting method are good for Holy crap! We can't use that now Let's quickly try the next variant Oh boy, different, okay, but not better either. We need to switch the in-painting method. We could of course go through all the other variants, but you're welcome to try them out yourselves. We're not saying they're not useful. There are always use cases for each method. But for what we're doing here, it's clear that you net in-painting is the best choice. All right. Let's try using the masking preparations from the other direction, all four times. Well, that looks much better already. Oh, I almost like this one even better, with that blur mask. Masking preparation using the quick preparation model. Here we can try two of them, let's test both Good! Really good! Okay, and now the other one In my opinion, the absolute best solution for this use case we can now play around with the seed to see a few different suggestions and choose one of them Now, let's show you where focus in paint shines and take on another challenge We'll take an image from Murphy's picture book, a beach scene We want to add a palm tree We'll put a nice big palm tree right in the middle This seems like a perfect spot Of course, we first have to connect the red node so that we can continue Let's run the UNET model again so you can see what it's not suitable for Quickly add palm tree to the prompt It seems like the palm tree wasn't inserted properly Let's give variant 2 another try It's one of the best options for these requirements Murphy is already saying it won't work anyway Let's finally use the focus model the viewers want to see how it's done right Ziggy says Even with trial and error, an AI can learn The focus model is up next Alright, our master was right again Let's switch to the focus model
All right, everything switched. Let's go. Okay, a palm tree is shaken in there. Wow, okay, das ist also Focus in Paint. Coole Sache. Okay, let's try to fix a faulty image now. All right folks, here we have the girl with three arms. One hand isn't right, and we're turning the butterfly into a balloon. Also, we'll spruce up the face a bit more. How we can mask, you already know. By the way, just a quick reminder, here I'll show you again the SAM detector. It finds entire areas in an image for you. That can sometimes be helpful. But for now, we'll stick to the standard masking. Let's mask the wrong arm, the hand, the face, and the butterfly. Let's adjust the prompt and get started. All right, for a first shot, let's tweak the prompt a bit more and also adjust the mask preparation. Clip G. Perfect painting of a beautiful smiling girl with a cute face, holding a big red balloon in her hand. Clip L. Painting, girl, cute face, red balloon. As described here, to add an object, variant 2 seems to be the best option. And here set it to neutral and then choose 2. Okay, two red balloons. But otherwise, I like the result. We've already gone over the 20 minute mark. We'll quickly show you a variant for outpainting, how to extract the inpainting as its own workflow. Promise, we'll make a short video next week, but today, that's too much for us. Okay, outpainting. Hmm, what image should we use? Ah, okay, Murphy in the castle. Let's give him some legs, grinning. What am I doing? I can't concentrate anymore. Ah, out painting. We want to do out painting. And here, what did I want to do here? Oh, down there, that's fine. Down there are the legs. We want to extend those. Here, I'm going to go with 4. I think that's pretty good for outpainting. Oh, I don't know anymore. I can't concentrate. Cue prompt and let's get started. Whatever. Here you can see how the masks are prepared. I think choosing 4 was a good idea. Huh? What's this? Oh, I didn't adjust the prompt at all. Ha! Huh. Well, I guess it's going to be a red balloon now. You can tell I'm at my wit's end. But hey, the picture still looks good. Look at those legs. Murphy's got some fabulous legs now. <laughs> Outpainting with large values usually goes wrong at some point. That's why you should do outpainting with a few steps. Let me quickly show you how that works. Ah, now I have a little problem. I don't have a preview image where I can copy something from. I need to adjust something quickly. 
Just watch. So, now we're good to go. Ziggy's battery ran out, so I'll take over briefly to wrap things up. Let's reload the workflow and run it again, switch to the outpainting section, turn on outpainting, and then let's see. Okay, load the image, switch the outpainting to the outpainting mask, and turn on outpainting. Let's do outpainting with the UNET inpainting model. Set everything up correctly here. I'll quickly click through it. We don't need to make any changes here. We can leave it as standard. The prompt can be completely removed. We don't necessarily need it for the outpainting. Mask optimization to 4, that's fine, let's leave it like that. Let's get started. Oops, I forgot to switch. I'll make up for it quickly and stop the workflow. Alright, let's start over again. The Ziggies have included this one node. Now we can simply copy the image by right-clicking with copy clip space. And up front, paste it in with paste clip space. And on to round 2. Let's go through it again until the legs are extended to their fullest. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed and saw how awesome outpainting can be in Comfy UI. If you liked the video, please leave a like and or subscribe. That would make us very happy. Bye, take care. See you soon. And then we'll also have the promised standalone and painting workflow.